So this week we have covered all of the benefits of the coffee bean, both in green form as well as in roasted, and the ways that we can extract all of that skin-loving awesomeness from the coffee bean. We have done the coffee oil infusion, and we have that ready to go in both the green form and in the roasted form. And today we are going to take that and all of that knowledge and turn it into a coffee butter. And I'm very excited to tell you more about that, and I will do so in just a minute. But before I do, hello. I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And this week we are making all of the coffee loving things. And we are tackling the coffee bean and all of the awesome components contained within coffee and how they can benefit our soap and cosmetics. And so before we can actually get to the making of all of these awesome products, we want to get all of our extracts done. We want to get all of our infusions done. We want to make our butters. We want to make all of the materials that we need so we can get ready to create. So hopefully you've been following along with this and you've been making your coffee oil and your all of your infusions and you're ready to go because today, as I said, we're going to turn it into a coffee butter. Coffee butter can be very confusing for you as a consumer when you are out trying to source it from a website. From one website to another, what the coffee butter is made out of tends to differ, but for the most part, they always stick with some sort of like palm shortening variety. And so we're going to talk about what that means. We are going to make a coffee butter out of a palm shortening variety. We're also going to make two other coffee butters in different percentages so we can see how well it firms up, what you can then do with it, and which one is going to be ultimately right for you. And at the end of this, you may decide that it's better for you to just go ahead and purchase it from the source. But I'm thinking after you are actually aware of how this stuff is made, you're probably not going to want to. So let's get to the video and we can do all of those things, three different coffee butter recipes, you know, there. <laughs> we are making coffee butter today and it's going to be awesome now you're probably wondering why i am using crisco well the reason why i'm using crisco is because if you look at the ingredients at the back of this we've got soybean oily fully hydrogenated palm oil palm oil and then you know a bunch of essentially preservatives in all of that and so that's what the first recipe is going to be it's going to be a 90 10 blend of shortening slash coffee oil the coffee oil infusion that we made yesterday I'm going to be using the roasted coffee oil for this, but here's why. This is from Eden's Garden or Eden's Secret or whatever. Hydrogenated vegetable oil, sweet almond oil, and coffee bean oil, coffee oil. Here's another one from Brambleberry. Same thing, vegetable oil, almond oil, and coffee oil. And we don't have percentages, but I did find percentages from the MSDS, from the all of the information sheets from I think uh, New Nature's, I don't remember, hold on, New Directions Aromatics. And so it looks like the hydrogenated soybean oil, 30 to 100%, and the coffee seed oil is from three to 10%. And so th this is literally what we're making, same thing. And for this price, what Brambleberry sells this for? 22 bucks for half of a pound? Insanity. We can literally make this from home. So you have in all of these versions, a uh, well a type of hydrogenated oil so either a soybean or, or a palm and sometimes you have sweet almond oil cool awesome can't you get like seven pounds of sweet almond oil from uh soper's choice for like less than thirty dollars you know so that price point isn't adding up to me and then the coffee oil which again this is a different method so it's going to be coffee oil plus whatever carrier oil you put into it in order to extract all of the oils from your coffee bean. But as we saw in yesterday's video, there's really no difference in doing it this way versus pressing. Mm -hmm. 
So if there's really no difference in doing it this way versus pressing, why would we not just make our own coffee butter? You know, but the thing is, I don't super love shortening because when I use a coffee butter, I want to use it in my leave-on products. I want to use it in my liquid lotions, my solid lotions, my body butters, my face creams, all the jazz. And so I want to put in an oil that's going to be actually super beneficial for the skin. No hate on shortening, but that's not something that I would ever put in any of my leave-in products. Fine for soap. I think we made a shortening soap out of this can of Crisco. And you know, that's great, that's awesome. Had a great bubble, the hand feel was awesome. But for a leave-on, yeah, no, I'm gonna go with something nice. And so for the next two recipes, we are going to use shea butter, but we're not only using shea butter, we're going to also play with those limitations. Because remember, it was for the coffee seed, the one that we did, it was a very small percentage of coffee oil that actually gets added to this, right? So up to 10% in all of the information sheets that we can get from our vendors. And so I'm going to, in this particular one, do an 80% shea butter, which is already a delightful, you know, butter to have on your skin regardless, and 20% the coffee, the coffee oil to make my coffee butter. Now with this process, all I am doing is heating it, the, the two ingredients together, and then mixing it all up, and then letting it just stay at heat for around 20 minutes, just like I do with my body butters or any sort of really infusion that I make, if I'm making a beard balm or the like, or even my face oils. Now the reason I do that and I keep it at heat is A, shea can, can get grainy, sure, sure, awesome, fine. But two, more importantly, I really want it to be heated up to a nice temperature around 120 degrees to make sure that everything is going to incorporate well and all those fatty acid chains are gonna start playing with each other and bonding well so you don't have to worry about continually shaking things up or you know whatever in the final whatever in this particular instance we are dealing with a solid so there's no shaking involved but it just makes me feel better so everything is more evenly distributed now for the third one as i said still using shea but i'm going to use shea and at 70 percent for this and 30 percent for the coffee oil that we created again still using the roasted coffee oil that we created Technically, it's a new one because the plastic in the first infusion and I just finished the video with it and whatever. Anyway, point is, we're going to try this at 70-30 to see how far we can push the limits on the butter itself so it still gets firm. Now, speaking of things getting firm, I'm not 100% convinced that things are going to get firm with the uh, the, the, the palm oil or the, the, the shortening, really, because shortening is already a very well it's it's very squishy and so i'm not convinced it's going to get firm anyway because i'm adding an oil a liquid oil to a shortening that is a semi-solid and so if you were interested in your coffee butter being firm all of the time and you wanted to use a shortening i would suggest using a soybean shortening because that is if it's just a straight straight soybean it is going to be more firm or using a proper palm shortening that i think you can also get from Soper's Choice, it's like their no stir method thing that you can use and get a firmer, you know, consistency. Because with my memory, my recollection of the palm shortening from Soper's Choice or Wholesale Supplies Plus to that, both of them are very solid at room temperature. But I do not think that the shortening itself is going to firm up. There's no possible way it really could, but we're going to try it and do the thing and show you all the results with all of this because that's what we like to do. And in addition to that, we're going to be doing, you know, the tests on all of these and seeing what they all look like. And always, as I said, pushing the limits. We like to experiment here and there's, these are questions that we have. Why does it have to be a vegetable shortening? Can it be a shea butter? Can it be a cocoa butter? Can it be a mango butter? Yes, to all of that, which we're going to find out. But also, can you see how much darker this particular one is as opposed to the first two that we poured? That's because there's more of the coffee oil in this guy than there was in the other two. So there's that. Now for these, I'm just going to let them firm up until they're firm. So, you know, a couple hours or whatever. But for me, it's always the next day. I, I don't know why I do this, but I didn't come back and finish the refilming. It will be the next day's footage, which is going to come for you right away. And we're going to test all of these things and see what it looks like, what the hand feel is, if it smells like coffee, 
all the jazz, you know, like I said, now for you, but I got to go to a cool title screen because I love the title cards. So we're going to go do that right now and have some fun with it. Okay, and on to the reveal. And yeah, as I said, this is not this is not going to firm up for all the reasons that I just listed. But all of the raw materials are already there. Now, remember in the video when we were talking about infusions as well as the video talking about the overall benefits, when I looked this up, and you can go back and look at the description and check out the information that I that I left in the description box and different links. When I looked this up, all the different methods for actually extracting coffee oil. We have obviously a hexane, we have a CO2, and then we do have as well just a press. And so like a, a literal, or like a screw press. And that will yield a pure coffee oil, certainly. And for that reason, it can be more expensive for sure. And so with that, what I would suggest to actually ensure that you're getting the potency of a coffee oil in each of these products would be to increase the amount of the of your own coffee oil infusion that you're putting into these. So say you're 30%. This is a 20% and it is very, very firm. It took a lot to break that. That was really rough. And for the, the hand feel of it, it feels amazing. And it smells like coffee, which is very nice. And for this one with the 70-30, we are looking at a very easy break. Now that said, I poured this thinner than the other, so it was going to be an easier break anyway. But the hand feel is great and the coffee smell is super potent. So this is a nice, easy, more cost-effective way to create your coffee butters at home so then you can fully customize them and make them your own and put the oils or the butters in it that you actually want while still getting all the benefits from your coffee oil that you also created on your own without having to spend an insane amount of doll hairs in order to create it. You know, this is my thinking. Now that we've done all this fun stuff though, it is time to do all of the tests and all of the making of the things, which is what we're going to be doing next week with all the fun. But for now, we're going to go back to my face and talk a little bit more about all of this awesome coffee stuff. And there it is, three different versions of a coffee butter. And yeah, for my part, the, the first one with the shortening, yeah, I don't like it. It's too squishy. It's like shortening, you know? That said, I used Crisco, and so I do know palm shortening can be firmer. So you can totally use palm shortening or just a straight soybean oil that's just, you know, straight soybean for the shortening. But for me, it's a little bit too soft, and I want to use my coffee butter in my cosmetic formulations. And so I want it for my body butters. I want it for my lotions. I want it for my creams and my hair conditioners. And so for that reason, I don't want to use a shortening because I do consider it a lesser product when I am formulating cosmetics. In soap, awesome, love that, do the thing. For cosmetics, I do want something that's going to be a little bit more skin loving. So for me, the other two recipes are going to be a lot better. Obviously, you don't have to use the shea. You can use any other type of butter that you would like. To that, I'm already sensing I'm going to get the question. The answer is yes. You can just immediately create your body butter from this right away and just you know bypass the infusing of the things. You can totally do that have a bowl, especially if you're using my method wherein I heat all of the oils and the solid butters and everything and keep them at temperature while they're doing their thing. So absolutely have a good time. I hope you guys had a good time with this one. Uh, if you want to subscribe and like do that thing, Sudzers, I always have a good time with you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for existing. Have you made your coffee oil? Are you going to make your coffee butter? I've been having a ton of fun doing this so far. I hope you guys are having a ton of fun too. Get all those things going over the weekend. We are going to do one more extract with of the coffee variety before we actually dive into making of the things, of the soaps and the lotions and the scrubs and all the jazz. So get all of your stuff ready and I'll meet you back here tomorrow for another round of coffee driven and fueled soapy fun. Bye.
or a soybean shortening that's just straight soybean. Cats are playing. But for me, it's a little... Cats. 